games are becoming an extremely saturated market and sadly, due to many reasons, many people skipped over some really cool games that should have been more recognised. I've always been open minded and even if a game, movie, book or album gets a horrendous reception, I'll check it out and so I've ended up playing many underrated gems and other games that aren't even worth mentioning. And since I've always been interested in horror, I've searched high and low for the next best thing. Thankfully, I've mostly found great games and these are just some of the titles that got overlooked due to many reasons. So hold on tight and let's start this countdown. Just a quick note, these aren't arranged in order of importance or value, so no game should be considered better or worse. But without further ado, I am Kirsten from What Culture Gaming and these are 10 best horror games you've probably never played. Number 10, Harvester. In the 90s, FMV games were pretty common, but sadly very few ended up being very good, just because FMVs limit gameplay harshly and while many of them only have some cheesy value, some of them tried to innovate and push the envelope in terms of content. Harvester was one of those games. It's a point and click slash interactive movie slash 2D action game where you play as Steve, who wakes up in a lynch-like town of Harvester during 1953. He can't remember anything, apparently you're getting married and everyone is absolutely insane. Every character is memorable and they all add to the game's extremely creepy and disturbing atmosphere. Your mum is obsessed with a cookie sale and keeps your father locked in an S&M kind of dungeon with blood splatters everywhere. The fire department is mostly firemen posing topless and there's a woman obsessed with wasps. The list goes on. However, it starts getting darker and darker until it unleashes its gory visuals and they are extremely graphic for a 1996 game. There's also a combat system later on, but it's fairly limited and it's extremely clunky as well. But at least they tried to pull something like that off in an FMV game. Overall, this is a game you play mostly for the disturbing atmosphere and visuals, and it's very entertaining. But installing it can be difficult due to the fact that you need to use a DOS box to install and run it. Number 9. Rise of Nightmares Yes, there is a horror game for the Kinect, and it works surprisingly well. You play as Josh, an alcoholic who is joining his wife in a vacation at Romania when suddenly the train where they are going gets attacked by zombies powered by steampunk-like machines, and your wife disappears and you have to punch, kick, maul and cut hundreds of monsters in order to save her. You twist your torso to look around, so you twist your torso to the right and you'll look to the right, do it to the left and you'll look to your left, put a foot forward in order to walk and during combat, depending on your weapon, you have to move your arms accordingly. So if you have a knife, you swing it around and if you have a chainsaw, you pretend you are controlling a chainsaw. It sounds clunky, but once you get used to it, it's a blast and there's enough gore and humour to make it a worthwhile purchase for horror fans or Kinect players that want something that isn't a fitness simulator. Number 8. Lucius have you ever wondered how a game that's part Hitman combined with The Omen would play like? No need to wonder anymore, Lucius is here and it's one of the most gruesome and darkly humorous games on this list. You play as Lucius, a six year old kid who on his sixth birthday, that's the sixth of the sixth 66, you know, you get the idea, finds out that he's the son of the devil and your objective is to kill some particular targets in the manner where he lives. Unlike Hitman, there isn't much variety in terms of how you kill your targets, but it's compensated by some great special abilities including telekinesis and mind control, some puzzle solving and some extremely gruesome death scenes. It's an indie production so it's not very polished, the game is very demanding and a lot of it's due to the insane amount of detail in the house, but it's still worth a look if you're feeling a little bit evil. Number 7. The Clock Tower this is one of my favourite horror games and you'll see why. It's a point and click game where you play as five different characters while trying to catch a mysterious killer called Scissorman, who is a man wearing a black cloak and kills his victims with a giant pair of scissors. The game could be easily described as a slasher film simulator and even with the cheesy voice acting and very dated visuals, the game is absolutely terrifying. You have no weapons, so you'll have to try and find somewhere to hide, an object you can throw, or anything that can help you outrun Scissorman while you are trying to solve some extremely complex puzzles. The music and atmosphere are absolutely fantastic and it's surprisingly easy to play, but there's a catch. 
Like I mentioned before, the puzzles are very difficult, and due to its whopping 10 endings, there are points where a single mistake can end the game in one of the worst endings, so there is a lot of replay value and challenge to this game. Sadly, it's not that easy to find and it can easily cost you a good 30 to 40 bucks, but it's absolutely worth it. Number 6. The Blair Witch Trilogy Yes, there are three games based on the Blair Witch films and they are better than the films. The Blair Witch Project was a huge hit and they had to cash in on its success. Thankfully, they picked three talented developers, each creating a different story that expanded on the Blair Witch mythos. The games play like a smoother and more complex version of the older Resident Evil and Silent Hill games, without tank controls and full control over your character, and they use the Nocturne engine, which was cutting edge at the time, featuring dynamic lighting, cloth simulation, and fully voiced dialogue. The first one was about Elspeth Holiday, a paranormal investigator for an X-Files-like group that goes into Burkittsville to investigate a murder case involving a man called Rustin Parr, who killed some children in his house claiming he was under the influence of something supernatural. The second one is about a Civil War officer which, after being left for dead, is rescued by an old woman called Bess and her child Robin. However, after being rescued, he has a premonition involving Robin and he has to save her from a supernatural being. This one is based around a story mentioned in the Blair Witch Project and is arguably the worst one due to its high difficulty and few annoying bugs. The third one is basically about who is Ellie Kedward and how she became the Blair Witch. You play as a priest who becomes a witch hunter that goes to investigate the disappearance of Ellie Kedward in Burkittsville. This one is the shortest one, but it still packs a punch, and it's the one that explores the Blair Witch myth even more. Overall, these ones are easy to find, and while they have some compatibility issues on anything higher than Windows XP, they are still worth tracking down, especially if you like the movies. Number 5. Echo Night Beyond This one is a sci-fi ghost story that takes place in a space station. You start the game as a man who is on his way to his honeymoon on the moon, and after his vessel crashes, you have to find your wife while avoiding a decent amount of ghosts. Some are friendly, and some aren't. You have to solve puzzles, talk to ghosts, and find clues about what happened. The game looks and sounds amazing. There's no combat, and you only die if your heart starts beating too much. It's the perfect proof that you can make a great game without such a huge budget and with a phenomenal concept. Number 4. Siren Blood Curse Arguably one of the scariest games I've ever played. This survival horror game may have lacked the advertising of something like Dead Space, Resident Evil 6 or 5, but good lord, it's absolutely terrifying. And it's a shame that Sony didn't seem to advertise it too well. You play as many different characters, but the game starts with a TV crew that goes to Hanuda, a small village in Japan after receiving a mysterious email which mentions the possibility of supernatural events. They witness a disturbing ritual which causes the villagers to become into creatures called Shibito, which is dead man in Japanese. The game has a combat system that works fairly well, but sadly the Shibito can't be killed, so you can knock them down but they'll come back to life a few minutes later. The focus is on stealth and it's surprisingly easy to do so thanks to a mechanic called sight jacking, which allows you to see through the eyes of the Shibito, and is pretty easy to play. Each character has different scenarios and each level is memorable. All of the characters are extremely well written, the voice acting is phenomenal and the presentation is borderline perfect. It looks amazing and the sound design is beyond creepy, the XMB sounds of the game are just the tip of the iceberg. However, it's only available through PlayStation Store in a gigantic 12 gig download or as a disc from Asia or Europe, so you might have to search on eBay or Amazon for a copy. Number 3. Scratches this is a good old-fashioned haunted house story with a top-notch story and atmosphere. Also, it's easy to run, it's not very big, and it's very cheap. It's one of the best adventure games in the last couple of decades and it's literally came out of nowhere. You play as a writer that moves into an abandoned house in order to get inspiration for his next novel, until strange stuff starts happening and it all becomes a fantastic story of death, despair, and probable hauntings. It's paced fairly well and the puzzles aren't particularly difficult. The game works around pre-rendered spheres which aren't very interactive but the sound design is top notch and if you don't get scared during the second night then you probably are a zombie. You can easily find it on Steam or GOG for less than 10 smackaroons and while it's a bit short there's a lot of value in this game. Number 2. Corpse Party 
This one's from Japan. It's a portable game and it's also a 2D adventure game. It's also very scary and disturbing. It's about a school that's been built on the grounds of an old school where some disappearances and unpleasant murders occurred and a group of students cast a ritual that transports them into the older school, causing them to fight for their lives as ghosts try to kill them at every turn. There are a lot of endings. The animation is creepy as all hell and the story is extremely well written. Just don't be surprised if you get the worst endings first. You can get it on the PlayStation Network and I recommend you play it under the sheets with a good pair of headphones. Number 1. Cursed Mountain one of the most original horror games out there and it's on a console that most people thought were designed for kids. It's about a mountaineer looking for his lost brother in the Himalayas and there's a lot of Buddhist and Tibetan references and mythology in it to enhance its atmosphere. I'd say more but its story is exquisitely made and everything is just perfect story-wise. Its controls are clunky but the story's atmosphere and remarkable attention to detail is amazing and it shows just how a small developer can overcome many roadblocks in order to deliver an an innovative and ambitious experience that not many games delivered in this generation. And that's our list. Which of these games have you played? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. But for now, I've been Kirsten from What Culture Gaming, and I'll see you in the next video.